you are more than likely using too much weight. You know, when you're lifting in the gym, when you're grinding, when you're putting the work, when you're pumping iron, it's more than likely that you're using too much weight. You know, you're putting too much weight on the bar and it's not as efficient as it could be. You know, you're not you're not getting the gains that you really deserve. This and this isn't even from like an ego lifting standpoint, right? Like if you're ego lifting, okay, that's like pretty obvious. You're not you're using too much weight. But I'm speaking about this from a from not an ego lifting perspective. Right? And you're gonna be a little confused, like, okay, like not an ego lifting perspective. Well, what could you be saying, right? Well, the principle of this video is is using less weight for more gains. And so I've known this principle, but I've made this I made the mistake of just not focusing on it or honestly just forgetting about it. I made the mistake many times. You know, like I just get too focused on putting more weight on, you know, progressing with the weight that I forget about using the weight. Using the weight for a purpose, not chasing it. And so the foundation of this principle, less weight equals more growth or more gains, or getting more out of less weight is basically the more stimulus you have, the more muscle growth you have. At the same time, if you can get less fatigue, that's even better. You know, less chance of injury, that's even better. And so why wouldn't you do that? You know, why wouldn't you have a decreased chance of injury, less fatigue overall from your workout, and more gains? Why wouldn't you? You know? Of course, the thing that blocks all of these is your ego. It's your ego. Because how you get less out of more weight is disadvantage disadvantaging yourself. Basically making the exercise harder by changing it slightly. Therefore you'll need less weight to get the same or even a greater stimulus. So some examples are the squat. So let's just go through the squat. More than likely you're using, you're using too much weight for the squat. More than likely. And I've seen this all the time with pretty much every single person that I've seen squat. You can get more to less weight. Let's take the average person who squats. Squats to parallel, um, takes one second on the on the eccentric or lowering down phase, and then one centric on the concentric phase, which is going back up. And like, okay. Yeah, there's so much more that you could do with less weight. So much more. One, slow down the negative. Really suffer the negative. Because, look man, like, the negative is going to get you so many more gains. Because the negative is where the most muscular damage occurs. It's why stretched negatives, stretched eccentric exercises, like the Romanian deadlift, get you so much growth. It's because of the lengthened negative, the lengthened eccentric. That's just, oh, it's just so juicy. So juicy. But going back to the squat, right? Like, lengthening a negative, really controlling it, suffering through it, and especially at the end range of the negative. You know, like, sometimes people, like, you know, they, like, slow down, and they just drop. You know, you want to suffer it. Because that will get you the gains that you want. And of course, you know, you're not you're not going to be able to use the same weight. But that's good. Because there will be less fatigue. And less chance of injury. The same or even more stimulus. It's like, it's a win-win-win scenario. Except for the loss to your ego, of course. That's the only thing, you know. If your ego's too big, well, that's some bad luck for you. Now, if you want to get gains, you got to toss the ego. So, with the squat, right? Like I said, most people go to parallel. Go as far as you can without compromising your form. You know, Go as far as you can with an upright torso, without butt wing, without any other the form breakdowns, right? Go as far as you can. Get the most out of the least weight, and you will get so many more gains. You will be able to progress so much better. And then finally, the concentric, honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. You can just explode down your way back up and be fine. So what we've modified a around two second squat to parallel, turn into a four, five, six second squat, you know, controlling the eccentric, getting like suffering through that, 
and the lengthening the range of motion as well. Oh, and also, I forgot. With the squat, pause at the bottom so that you don't have any help from your ligaments. So that all of the effort is in your muscles because there is the concept of the stretch reflex, which is basically when you stretch your muscle, there's a sort of rebound effect of which you are stronger in a sense. And hence why, you know, people squat down and then they just immediately shoot back up, right? Because they use that stretch reflex to help themselves get the weight back up. Like we're gonna do less weight for more gains. I'm gonna get rid of that, you know. Do a slow eccentric down, suffer through it, like I've said again and again. Pause at the bottom. And then push back up. That'll make your squat so much harder. You'll probably need to go down like 20, 30 pounds in weight, but it'll be amazing because, like I said, less fatigue, less injury, more gains. What else could you possibly want? You know, it's like it's the perfect trifecta, you know? More gains because everyone wants more gains. Less fatigue, so you can do more workouts, you can recover easier, less work your injury, so you can just keep on going, man. And the trade-off, of course, is your ego. So what would you like? To preserve your ego? Or more gains? More gains? And more gains? Take your pick. And so going through, let's take another example. The bench press. Once again, control the eccentric. You know, I see so many people, I guess for the bench press it's more, it's more like they control the eccentric for like the first two thirds and they drop the weight in the chest and they push back up. It's like, no, 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 no. You control all the way, especially the end parts of the eccentric because that's where the most growth is happening. That's where you get the most tension, the most stretch. It's like, that is the money point. That is the point where you should be focusing the most on. The most, that is arguably the most important part. So stop it with the, oh, I'm controlling the eccentric, but then dropping on your chest and then pushing back. I'm like, stop that. Control the eccentric. And once again, like the SWAT, pause. Now there's the, I forgot what kind of press it was called, but there's a specific press, but basically, there's a specific name for it, but the press is basically a bench press, but you lower it to your chest. You touch your t-shirt. You don't actually lower it onto your chest. You just touch the t-shirt. And you pause, and then you press back up. So you're not actually touch, you're not actually letting the bar rest on your chest. You're keeping the constant tension there. And it's like it's a, it's an amazing bench press variation, and like you should do it. It'll lower your bench press by like 30, 20, 30 ish pounds, like the squat. But like the gains are going to come so much better. So one last final example, right? Pull-ups, like honestly, my favorite exercise. But, you know, when you can do a lot of pull-ups, there's an ego thing, it's like, you know, you can do a lot of pull-ups, so just like spam them, right? And so, you know, you just, you just spam, you know, you just fly and do explosive pull-ups, explosive pull-ups, you just go like, you do pull-ups super fast, you know, you don't really control the eccentric whatsoever, and you just keep repping them out. And it's like, that is not going to get you as many gains as if you were to control the eccentric. And I've done this so many times, it's like, I should have probably controlled the eccentric because that would have given more, me more gains, but my ego was too big at the moment, so I didn't want to do that. And so I, I tell you, I speak to you, do you want more gains or do you want a bigger ego? Because you can get either or. You can either or, more gains or big ego. Which one do you want? Now I would assume that because you're watching this video, you want more gains. And so modify your exercises so that you use less weight and you get more out of it. Take the ego out of this. This is not an ego game. This is a game where you're here to grow big, to get mass, to grow muscle. That is what you're here for not to enlarge in your ego and that's not the goal and so with all of this the caveat is this doesn't mean that you should never use heavy weights this doesn't mean that you should you should never go heavy right like heavy weights have their usages you know like for example deadlifts you know with the deadlift you aren't supposed 
to control the eccentric and in fact if you do you're probably going to break your spine so don't do that but like deadlifts the entire point is just the positive just the concentric movement and so just slap on all the weight buddy because like there's not much to to get more out of less weight that is of course for the only positive deadlift right the only concentric deadlift rdl the main deadlift the stiff leg deadlift those no, no, you stop, because those are eccentric primary exercises. Those are primarily eccentric exercises. And the entire point is to suffer through the negative. And that's how you grow, from RDLs and stuff like deadlifts. That's the point with them. Those For those exercises, you don't just keep slapping on the weight. For those exercises, you can use less weight for more gains. And so, overall, in general... You don't want to always stick with the baby weights. Like, I'm not telling you to stick with baby weights and do, like, 30 rep sets. Like, that's not good, right? You want to stick with your same rep ranges, you know, your one one reps to, like, 20-ish reps, you know, the range from hypertrophy. You want to stick to that, but make the exercise harder so that you can use less weight. And it's, like, the fourth or fifth time I'm saying... But more gains, less fatigue, less injury. So most of your training can be done with less weight. Most of your training, if not all of your training, can you can do it with less weight by altering the variation of the exercise, altering the angles somehow, isolating the muscle better, and therefore using less weight. And that's exactly what you should do if your goal is primarily for gains. Now, I can't help you if your primary goal is to caress your ego and stroke it even bigger. That's the opposite of using less weight for more gains. You know, if you want to build up, build up your ego, go ahead. Use more weight for less gains. Go right on ahead, man. Go right on ahead. But if you're here for gains, less weight. Less weight for more gains.